Folks, God's good to us, isn't he? Amen. And we need. It's amazing that uh, Greg sings that, uh, in that song this morning. Because in this message today, I, I want to describe some of those needs. And in uh, thinking on that this week, in the revealing of this scripture today, it is a Christmas story. It's a portion of the Christmas story out of chapter 1 of the book of Luke this morning, the New Testament. But it's a revealing today of the coming of Christ, that announcement, how important that is to us today. And I hope that you don't look at that story today and say, I know that story. I've read the Gospels many, many times and the different accounts, and, and, I, and, and, it, and I, I, don't, I don't have to listen to it. But I want to say this to you today, folks. The joy of Christmas is still Jesus. This old world has a, a, a new take on it, a new look on it. The world today sees it in a different light. We were just talking this past week with different ones, and, and, and it's amazing. I, I can remember just a few short years ago that everyone said, take Christmas, the word Christmas, Merry Christmas. Let's take Christmas out of this uh, because that's got the word Christ in it, and you might offend someone. Folks, I'm not offended by Jesus Christ. How about you? So we're going to use it. We're not going to use Happy Holiday. I come by a sign on the church just this past week over here on 301, and it says if you take Christ out of Christmas... We now have a hollow day. A hollow day. And that is so true. Because the events that took place in the birth of a, a Savior, Jesus Christ, is the most important thing to us, folks. It is. It is the ground floor of eternal life. Christ came and he would die that you could have everlasting life. Wow, as we look at Christmas today, we must see it and, and, and see the need. And, and it's amazing that it seems like in a, in a world that we live in today, that, that we need some kind of, uh, the world looks at a, 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 where they could get a how-to manual. You ever seen them? Everywhere you go, somebody's got some kind of manual on how to do something. And we say, we need that how-to manual. But I tell you today, church, we already have it. We've already got the how-to manual. So we, we're a world today that sees a, a, a need for something that they don't even know exists. But you and I, we do. We do. We believe today. Amen? We believe in Jesus Christ today. Folks, I believe in that virgin birth today. It's the first step of my faith. That birth, that death, that burial, that resurrection, that ascension. And soon, he's coming back. The rapture. See, I don't have any trouble with any of that. I don't have any trouble believing that because, yes, I had a need for a manual years ago and someone introduced me to it. And I thank God every day for that. Somebody give me a little New Testament one time. Boy, I had that thing. You know what it had? It had a little ribbon like this in it. Did y'all have one? Sure it did. Man, you could mark stuff in that thing. You see, I still look at my Bible today and I want to mark something. I want to hold on to something. And this scripture today out of Mark, uh, Luke chapter 1 is some of that scripture today. Let's look at it real quick because I, I want it to be revealed to you one more time today, if you will allow me to do, uh, to read this today. Uh, because I want you to see the joy of what we're talking about once again today. Stand with me in Luke chapter 1 and we'll, look, uh, we'll start in verse 26. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, it says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was uh, Joseph and of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art uh, highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind the manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. 
He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto the throne of his uh, father David. And he, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Heavenly Father, teach us from your scripture today. Walk us through it once again, Heavenly Father, as we see the, the opening verses of the announcement of the coming of our Savior. May we once again have that joy of Christmas in our hearts. For it's your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. The joy of Christ, uh, Christmas as it is revealed in the Scriptures today. This is a joyous time, a concerning time, absolutely. A time that was, was not understood fully, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. There, there was a time here, there's this announcement in these Scriptures today with Mary and Joseph and what's going to take place here. And, and there was a, a lot of questions to answer. We would even stop to say they needed, they needed Emmanuel to discover what was happening here. Oh, but church, they didn't because they had, Jesus, they had God Almighty who was going to reveal through this angel the words that he'd sent as a message to each and every one. Not only then, but through uh, uh, time and, and through the centuries as it's passed by, thousands of years, you see, and prior to that, the coming of the Messiah was announced. We look at Old Testament prophecy and we realize that God had a perfect plan well before the birth of Jesus Christ. He was looking unto the future of you and I. The message would be to the Gentile nation. The message would be to First Black Creek Baptist Church and everyone in seated here in the sound of my voice. Oh, listen, we would have the opportunity to know him as Lord and Savior. We would understand the joy of Christmas. We would understand the joy of having Jesus Christ in our lives. And I think in revealing this scripture today, it reminds us that there was a perfect plan of God and it is upon us. Once again, another year has passed and folks, we need to preach and teach Jesus more than we ever have in a dying, dying world, you see. I believe uh, once again, as that sign said, without Christ in Christmas, we have no joy. We are very hollow and we are in a world today, folks, who doesn't even know about Jesus Christ. There's a celebration going on right now across the, um, America itself of a Christmas time of year and majority of people have no idea, no earthly idea of what they're even celebrating. But you see, he was on the way. God had a plan. God had a plan and, and in that plan, he, he began to, to teach us with this manual we had a, a question. We had a question. What do we need? We have a question about salvation. Some of our little ones, they have that question about being saved. I, I had to be uh, very, very gentle and, and elementary as I could this morning. And, and, and talking to our, our little ones over at the uh, Sunday school party they had for our children this morning. I just want to thank all of you all that, that, that got together and put that together. Folks, them children had a blast. What we did was I, I watched as, what was it, seven, eight, nine of those kids somewhere around there seated down in front of me. And I began to talk to them. And, and it was amazing, church. I, I brought them into a loop by, by mentioning Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus. Poor Sandy was so excited when I mentioned that. And then we talked about gifts. And I brought in a special gift. And in our scripture here in chapter 1, that gift is being introduced. The acknowledgement of, of Mary, of, of, the, of the seed of God, a gift to mankind. It, it said here, it was in the sixth month, of, and, and an angel appeared. Gabriel was sent where? From God. 
Folks, listen, we have to sometimes just stop in our texts and our readings and our biblical tr- uh, truths and realize who we're talking about and get a good picture, maybe a great picture of what is happening here. She is in touch with Gabriel. He has been sent from God to deliver a message. The Christ child that has been announced in prior uh, prophecies of the, of the whole Holy Word, this great manual that we have, is about to take place. And that one that you know, listen how he related that. Did you hear that in the story with with Elizabeth and John the Baptist? He said, and by the way, that one that you know, it's your, uh, is it your cousin, uh, Elizabeth? Yeah, he said, listen, that she is uh, your cousin Elizabeth. She has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is in the sixth month with her. She was called barren. And you know what he went on to do? This is God's way, folks. He went on to answer the question. I know what you're thinking. How could that be? How could that possibly be? Folks, I'll tell you how things can possibly be because all things are possible with God. Amen? Amen. He went on and answered the very question that she had in her mind, you see. And I believe that's important for us today as we think about needs. What is it that we need? We don't need a manual on, on discovering joy. Folks, all we've got to do is open our heart and receive Jesus today. We'll have joy, amen? We'll have joy in our heart. But you think about needs. Is that people need the Lord, brother? People have other needs, and you, you can relate to some of these. Sometimes we say, oh, I, I need less pain today. And I don't know what we're going, what you're going through. And, and it's different ones talk about different pains that have. Today, I've got a need for less pain it, it might be a, something as simple as, boy, I've got a need today. You ever been out working and you thought, I'd like to have a cool drink of water? It could be something as simple as a cool drink of water. I've got a need of, for a cool drink of water. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, uh, finances. Maybe it's money. Maybe you've, you've, start, uh, you've, you've set aside a, a, a something in your mind and you're thinking, boy, if I just had, uh, i got a need for if I had more money or maybe a, a better job. We talk th- uh, that sometimes here with you and and we talk about jobs it's so important to have a job it and it, it truly is if you've got a, let me tell you something if you've got a job today you thank god for it amen because he has provided that for you but sometimes we think we need that better job or our or, 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 or newer car or truck or or our vehicle or or something we have we have those goal, we have those goals we have those mind that mindset of of something that 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 might bring us joy But let me tell you about the joy in those needs. They're short-lived. Folks, they're short-lived. Because let me tell you about getting a new car. Pretty soon it'll be an old car. Let me tell you about that better job. Pretty soon you'll think, I'd like to have a better one. Oh, you think sometime that that, that if I had less pain in this hip, and guess what? You get some in this hip. They're short-lived many times. But the joy in Jesus should not be something that is short-lived. The joy in Jesus, my friends, this morning should take us right on into eternity. You see, we look at this birth. We, we look at what took place here in this particular scripture. Oh, listen, in verse 29 said, uh, uh, it says, And when she saw him, Mary saw him, she was troubled in his saying and cast in her mind, What manner is, is this salutation? Is, is he talking to me about? What, 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 what's he talking about? And the angel said to her, Wait a minute, fear not, Mary. Hang on. Hang on, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. Church, in the middle of summer one time, I preached a message. Have you found favor with God? And it's still a good message. It still stands true today. Have you found favor with God? What is God using you for? What is God blessing you for with today? Listen, you got up this morning. All of you took a breath. Did you thank God for it? Boy, did, for, for, that, for, for the opportunity to come and to worship today, did you thank God for it? Is God blessing your life? Do you have that job? Do you have a car? Oh, listen, or do you have a job? Oh, listen, do you have clothes on your back? Did you wake up in a, in a warm home or a cool home? I just woke up just last night. I heard a noise. I realized what it was. 
Oh, the heat was on. God's good, folks. God's good. I've woke up before with the cool air on. God is a great provider. And he does that for his children. Listen, he gives so graciously to us. We wonder then, how, how do we get off track? How do we, you, you, we know about the joy of Christmas because we've got Christ in it. Listen, we've got the manual. We've got the good news. It has been sanctioned, ordained. It has got the stamp of approval of God Almighty. It's written all over this, folks. Listen, it was penned by man and it was given the authorization to distribute by God himself. So I don't have any trouble, folks, reading it. Understand, trying to understand it the best I can, growing in it daily, and that's what we should be doing, striving to be spiritually healthy. And this Word will lead you there. Isn't it amazing how God's Word speaks to us? Isn't it amazing how God can talk with us? No matter what you're doing, you might be driving down the road, uh, you, you might be out on, on, uh, on the front porch, you, you never know. But if we open our hearts... In our minds and prepare ourselves today for what God's got in store folks you'll see him show up because God's got a message for you folks every day he's got a message for you and he's waiting to give that to you what he's waiting on you is take the time to receive it I enjoyed a Tuesday I believe it was this week more, more I say I enjoyed it more than usual we got up and as we normally would do and have our uh, daily devotion, Sandy and I. And I'm going to tell you something. I got a message in, th- in 45 minutes. I got three, the same message three times in 45 minutes. In 45 minutes, and that is the truth. We read our, our, our daily bread, our devotion. We prayed over it. We talked about it. We prayed over it as we do every morning. And it was about the cross of Calvary. It was about the peace that we can have because of what took place on that cross. 25 minutes into that, which is about what we spent, Sandy went about doing whatever, and I turned the TV on. David Jeremiah, y'all ever catch him once in a while? David Jeremiah was on. And as I turned it on, he was standing with his arms wide open. And he said, it's a picture. He said, this is a picture of Christ on that cross with his hands as broad as he could be, as they could be, to let you know, I'm welcoming you. I'm doing this for all. The cross, what it means to us. I said, wow. And he closed that service. I got in my vehicle and went down to a little store there in, over in Stark. And I had seen a man getting in his truck with his help of his wife with a, a walker. And I said, I've got to stop in there and check on him. And I did. And he told me about two major surgeries he'll be having here in the next probably 90 days. And right in the middle of it, he said, but you know what, Brother Gary? He said, those are major surgeries. And the doctor was emphasizing major And how they were. He said, the whole time I was sitting there thinking, they're not bigger than my God. He said, I thought about him on the cross. I said, unbelievable. Three times in about 45 minutes, folks, I heard about the cross of Calvary. And in just 30 minutes this morning, you have already heard and will continue to hear me talking about the joy of Christmas. The joy of Christmas is Jesus Christ, our Savior. You see, it went on to say in this verse, and the angel, uh, verse 30, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And but you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Folks, I don't have any trouble believing that. I have no trouble whatsoever. He shall be great, talking about Jesus, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him to be the throne, uh, to him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob, it says, and forever and of the kingdom there shall be no, me, no end. There was joy. There was joy in this announcement. 
Folks, it's joy that is going to be everlasting. It's going to be a joy that is emphasized. Oh, listen, you're going to take it with you. I'm going to take it with me. I'm going to read it. And I, by faith, believe in every word. Folks, I was not there in that manger scene. I was not there to see Mary pregnant. I was not there whatsoever seeing Jesus grow up. But I tell you, I read about every account of it. I get a picture of it and I get excited because I have joy for Jesus in my heart. How about you? Amen? Oh, my church, it's an exciting time. Mary didn't understand it all. And, and there's times in our life where we read the scriptures. We don't, we don't know what's going on. There's, a, there's a, uh, things that happen between our, our mind and our heart. I, I read a story. I, I, it, it's an old story. You, you all know it. You've seen it. Y'all know about old Ebenezer Scrooge? Let me tell you what was wrong with him. He was filled with greed. He was filled with bitterness. Y'all remember? He hated Christmas. Old Scrooge. Can't you see his face? Oh, he was pitiful. He was a man overrun with with pain, suffering. And and this loss, it, it caused bitterness in his heart. He became a man filled with anger. And greed and and, and what had happened, he lost the joy of life. But if you go on and 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 watch that story, if you probably have or read it, uh, Charles Dickens, we see the focus change. The focus change and it began for him, and he began to reflect once again on what Christmas was really about. He realized that it it, it was about giving. It it was about being thankful for what God has, has provided to us. And the joy of life itself. And he realized that it wasn't about money. It wasn't about those needs that that I mentioned earlier. Listen, he discovered in his heart that that connected him with the divine plan. And when I read the scripture here today of of this account of Mary and Gabriel, there there was, in her mind, she was trying to negotiate it to, to a better understanding. God was revealing those answers. He did it 2,000 years ago, and he's still doing it today. You see, he wants us to know. He wants us to have that understanding today. Oh, so, so let me ask you a question today, because it's a very, very serious, serious question. Have you experienced the gift of the joy of Jesus this year? We're in the midst of Christmas. It's the Christmas season. The scriptures tell us in this manual that we've got that he's, that he's born. Folks, we read further into it in his life. He has walked to this earth. We have experienced in Scripture of him growing up as a a boy. We have have an explanation of his his life as as a youngster and and being raised and a a carpenter's son. We we see where he began to say things that, that, that only someone like Jesus would have known. He was filled with the answers that the, the philosophers and the, and the great wizards of the world knew. He knew about them. He began to teach. What was he teaching? A manual of joy. And it would include the birth. It would include the burial. The death, birth, death, burial. It would include the resurrection. But let me tell you something. It comes to sometimes in those scriptures and in those those teachings and that preaching and that thought process and in our time alone as we negotiate in our mind, sometimes it breaks our hearts of what God has done for us. And then there's other times, folks, we shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to do that for old me. 
And folks, he was. You see, there's nothing in the birth of Christ that we should look at and say, oh, what a sad time. It's a joyous time. The world sees us forcing Christianity on them. Folks, the world is forcing Christianity out. Our job is to talk about it as much as we can. Because there's a joy in knowing Jesus Christ. There's a joy that's still around because, because he has in, in, uh, in our life engulfed it in such a way that, that we, we didn't allow it to be vanished. And the world, in, our, in the minds and the soul of man today, it, it has truly done just that. See, let, let me give you just a, a, a quick uh, a, a paradox of things that, are, that, that we see happening around us that has taken the place of the joy of Jesus. Let, let, me, let me say it this way. Let, we have, we've got in history today so much that, that tells us what we have done and what we've accomplished and how great a nation we are and how wonderful we are. And we have got all these uh, 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 numbers that, that tell us how, just, just what a wonderful people, how we've outsmarted God, how we're bigger than God, how we don't need God. Folks, I'm quoting and saying things right here because that is the actions that America shows today. Day. And we need Jesus. Folks, we need the joy of Jesus. But think about it. We've got taller buildings, buildings, but we've got shorter tempers. We've got wider freeways, but we've got narrower viewpoints. We spend more, but we have less. We buy more, but we enjoy less. We've got bigger houses and smaller families. We've got more conveniences, but we've got less time for God. We have more degrees, but we've got less... I'm going to say this, folks. We've got more degrees that are given to people today with their studies, and I am all about, uh, uh, you know, stepping forward education. We need good education. But I'm going to tell you something. We're not using them very wisely anymore. We drink too much, smoke too much, spend too much recklessly, laugh too little, drive too fast, get too angry, stay up too late, get up too tired, read too little. And we watch TV much more than what's worthy on there to even watch. We've multiplied our possessions, but we've reduced our values. And we have learned how to make a living, but not a life. That's sad, church. We've learned how to make a living, but not how to make a life. I believe this. In 2020, folks, I believe that it's high time as Christians we get back and remember what it's all about, the joy of Jesus. And it's found in the joy of Christmas because it's all about our Savior being born. Let me close with this last verse or two that we read. And Mary said in verse 38, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it on me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You see, in this last verse, following, For with God nothing shall be impossible, Mary recognized, oh, that she was going to be in a very special place. How about you? You don't allow God to put you in a very special place? Can God use you? Will you show that joy? Don't let it vanish, folks. Don't let it vanish from your life. Stand up for it. Jesus Christ, folks, that's the joy of Christmas. Amen? I hope you know him today. Every head bowed and every eye closed today. No matter what you're facing today, let these scriptures reveal to you the goodness of God. Let these scriptures today remind you once again that this isn't some kind of old, old, boring story. This is, this is the birth of our Savior. Don't let it vanish from your life. Find joy in it this, this time. Let Christmas have Christ in it. And if you've got Christ in Christmas, folks, You've got joy in Jesus. Heavenly Father, 
We just have read your word, spoke on it, Heavenly Father, the words that you have revealed to me. And I ask, Heavenly Father, that we leave here filled with that wonderful, wonderful spirit, knowing that this manual that we have is the Holy Bible. And you've given it to us that we could have understanding. Lord, that we may research your word. Oh, that we may open our hearts and minds and let it be revealed. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray today if there, one, there be one here in the sound of my voice that knows you not as Lord and Savior, today would be the day of salvation. Lord, if there be one here today that is struggling with the, uh, the very fact of, uh, of what it all means and, and how it, it applies to their life, may they open their hearts and minds, Lord, and receive that that you have for them today. Accepting you, believing in you, Heavenly Father, confessing to you. Oh, Lord, that sinners in need of a Savior, opening their heart and let you in. What a fulfilling moment to open our hearts with faith and belief and being filled with the Spirit. Oh, for salvation, rededication, church membership, Lord, we turn this service over to you and ask that you move as only you can. Of course, in your name we pray. Amen.